Hello, my name's Tim Cross. I'm the pastor of Living Word Church in Muskegon here. And this is a, our program for men only. We're talking about men's stuff. We're talking about, we're talking to men. I hope that if you're out there, you're a man watching. I realize there may be some ladies watching, especially after I told you you had to go someplace else. And the lady might say, I'm going to watch this. Who's this guy telling me what I can do? That's okay. I guess you can watch the program. But basically, we're talking about men and we're talking about the role. And, and, and uh, we're doing this program today. We've done a previous one and really doing a program on a man and his children and and, and the role of a, a father the role of a man in a child's life we're going to talk about this for a few programs i've got with me i've got david erickson david good to have you we've been together a while preston man you and me been together for i remember when you didn't have any gray hair sure. <laughs> you probably remember when i didn't have any gray hair either and adam you were barely around back when you know, you know were you born I just, anyway I don't think so. you don't think so all right praise god so we're talking about some men's issues now adam you you found a couple scriptures in our break there you know as as we we're preparing for the program why don't you read those scriptures real quick yeah we had one from proverbs um now this is my father-in-law so you know my children are his grandchildren so he might appreciate this one but it says that children your children's children are the crown of old men and the glory of children is their fathers. And I thought, what a perfect verse for what we're going Ooh, over today. Yes. All right. Now, what do you think that means? Let's just throw this out. Now, now maybe we're, we're probably sharing some scriptures and, and what have you. And maybe maybe we'll be preaching a little bit more than we normally do. And, and uh, But yet, we, we have talked about that collision of worldviews, how... The, the difference between a biblical worldview, meaning you look at the Bible, or excuse me, you look at the world through the view of the Bible, as to say our culture's worldview. And there has been a change in how we see children. Okay. Now, when it says that the children are the glory of the Father, or the, the, you know, what, do you, what do you think that means? Well, I think that if you ask me what's my most prized possession, you know, it's definitely my children. Um, you know, and I think what, what a better thing to have than grandchildren someday. Mm -hmm. you know? you know, I look at the relationship. You know, Preston has a very good relationship with my children. And I can see the joy that they bring to him. And I can yeah. see that the way he's able to, to bless them better than maybe he was his children at the time just being in an older, older position. Mm -hmm. um, but just to be able to have fun with them and, and, and to send them home at the end of the day. <laughs> you know, because parenting, good parenting is hard work. You know, good parenting is, is not always easy. It's full of blessings. But grandparenting comes with more of the fun things and less of the hard work. I'm looking work forward to that, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I think it means. It's the crown, of, the crown of older men. Okay, but what do you think that aspect of where the fathers are the glory of the children? Well, if you look in, in years past, maybe not so much lately, but a father is is always been a hero figure I think, mm. to, to young men, especially. Oh man, uh, we might be losing that very rapidly, but you know, I, I think the glory. I think well, that's you know, um, that's their hero. No one's better than your dad. No one's stronger and bigger and better and smarter than than your dad. Oh man, that's good. I've, that's a good point. So I, mean, I remember kids fighting. My dad can beat your dad. Right? Right. <laughs> my dad's muscles are bigger than your dad's. <laughs> yeah, I remember when you think my dad can do anything. Hmm, that's good, man. All right, well, thank you, Adam. I, I want to talk. Let me just put okay. a point on that one right there. Uh, dads, your children will always see you as a hero. Always, no matter how old they are. They always see you as a hero, and that brings great responsibility to you is to fulfill what is a proper hero and what is not a proper hero. They'll always look at good, bad, or ugly. You're still a hero in their sight, and the problem comes when they get older is how does your lifestyle contrast with you being a hero? Ooh. That's where the problem comes, and, it, and if, he doesn't, if it doesn't line up, it's going to bring a lot of problems for them as they grow up to be an adult because they're gonna have lots of conflicts because it wasn't subtle. They should be able to see you as a hero all the way through. Not perfect, but a hero doing the right thing in in front of them and away from them. Not just practicing something on the outside and doing the opposite at home. They should be able to see you all the way through. You should be genuine through your to your children and you should demonstrate love. There's a statement that they made that says the love and encouragement of a father. This is validated by research by uh, psychologists. The love and encouragement of the father is the determining factor in the well-being of your child. That's a heavy, heavy state. It doesn't say the wives, we're all important, but the well-being, the determining factor of the well-being of your child. So when you're a good hero to your children all the way through, and it's, even when they get older, and they can always look back upon you, wow, that's a heritage. That's part of that heritage we're trying to establish. Hmm. That's good. Now, now, Preston, you bring up something that, that I have... 
I have read articles, you know, I've seen stuff, uh, you know, you, uh, I get a lot of my information online and sometimes you come across some stuff that you just go, what on earth? And, and these somewhat, I want to say reputable people, or at least they're, uh, they're put on the, and I don't mean just like surfing the internet. I get, I, honestly, I guess this sort of locates me. I, I've got America Online, AOL. And so these are articles that I have found that, you know, you look through, a lot of times I look through the news and they'll have these little blurbs on here and, you know, different articles. And David, I've came across articles like this. Are men really necessary? <laughs> are, and almost you read the article and it's like, you've got to be kidding me. And it's things like that, that basically the premise is now a woman can go get artificially inseminated so she can have a child without being with a man. So... And she can, and, and basically the premise is women are much better at raising children than men. So is a man really necessary? And you sit and you go, and, 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 and that is, uh, you know, you even see it in Hollywood in times and things. Women are now having babies. They just say, yeah, I'll just go have a baby. I don't need a man. I don't need a, I don't, I don't need the hassle of a man. And these children, all we got to do is, you know, I, I, I'm better at raising children than a man. So are men necessary? Are fathers necessary in a child's life? Let me differentiate between a man, a, a dad, and a father. There is a huge mm -hmm. difference between a man being a dad and a man being a father. If, if you're going to be an absentee father, <coughs> then she might as well get in, in, artificially inseminated. Your children need you to be a dad. That's right. Okay? Mm -hmm. There's a big difference there. <clears throat> now you said something though that can rile some people up and I think this is part of where this is and I, I know this is part of that world you think maybe I'll come down to Adam because it's probably more your generation our generation a little bit different all right but Adam one of the things I see today I call it gender blending to where men and women are the same so if they're the same a woman's got everything that a man should have. You know, I mean, the, a man and woman are no different. So why can't a woman just raise a child? What do you need to really, really a man for if there's no differences in roles? Well, I, I think that there are some cases where, you know, women have to raise a child by themselves, and, and they do the best they can. And, and they do a good job in, in some instances. The problem, I think, is that there's something about a young man wanting to look to an older man as a hero or a role model. Or, or a person. So if you don't have a, a good father figure at home, he's going to you know, have a camaraderie with men somewhere. And if it's not a good father figure in the home, it might be a very bad situation outside of the home. You know, they might look for that respect and, and what is a man, that image of a man, they might start looking for that uh, in the world's view. And mm -hmm. I can tell you that's probably where you end up with people that are hurting uh, because the world doesn't know what a man looks like. They think they do, but it, it doesn't lead to anything concrete. It doesn't give anything positive to pass down, and it leaves you feeling you know, lost. Where a good father figure in the home uh, shows you the way to be a proper man, which is different from what the world says. And so I think without that, they're going to try to find it from somewhere. Right. There's no father in the house. But is there a difference between men and women? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think David hit it right on the head. You know, Women, can, can they bring a certain something to the parenting aspect of it that a man cannot. And a man certainly does the same thing. You know, we, we look at each other for, you know, how does a man act? How does a man deal with, you know, emotions? How does a, how does a man, you know, follow after God? And how does a man lead his home? And, and what's the spiritual head of the home? And um, there's so many sides to it. There's so many differences. Not that a woman can't do many of these things, but a man is just better suited for some of them, just as a woman's better suited in some of those roles. Okay. All right, Preston, you want to say something? Yeah, because, you know, God created man and woman and joined them together in, in the bond of marriage. And what that brings is brings complete. Adam was complete until God separated and brought Eve out of Adam. So when you bring them together, that's that fullness, that wholeness. And when you have a husband and wife together, there's wholeness. When you have women, it's I'm sorry, they, technically they can have children. Yes, they can, they can be inseminated and have children, but they don't have that wholeness they can show unless they're fortunate enough to have a man come along and just represent that male figure in that. Men are called to lead. Women are called to nurture. So if you have one and all this brought up is nurturing, 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 how can they lead? How can that male, especially if it's a young man born in that family, how can that man step up and become a leader in the areas? Because a man is called to lead his family and the things of how to respond in the world, things in, 
and how to respond to God, show him the direction they need to go. And that's what Amanda does, shows her children direction. This is the direction you need to go. These are our values. These are things we believe in. These are things we know are right. Follow me. And especially follow me as I follow after the Lord. So it's those kinds of things like this. Whereas a woman, they may not be concerned with that. Or a man, you know, maybe adopted a son, right? Doing the best job they can, but it's still not bringing wholeness. He maybe can't nurture a way a woman can nurture. And that's where the difficulty comes. We're not creating wholeness. And that's what we see a society today of no wholeness in those children. All right, now Preston, as you were talking there, I mean, part of that collision of the two different worldviews, a biblical worldview, which I know is going to sound old-fashioned and it's liable to make some people angry, but it, it depends on the lens or, or what you're looking through. The biblical worldview is that God created man. Now, the biblical worldview is that we did not evolve. We, right. we were created by a creator, and he put his attributes, he, he put all of who he was in a man, but then he took woman out of the man and took a portion of who he was and put it in a woman. Right. So there was part of God's attributes in a man, and there were part of God's attributes in a woman, and the two of them together represented God. And they'd had different roles to play. They had different aspects in their nature that represented God, and they were different. They are different. And part of the reason we are saying part of, the, part of that, that view is that with children and having children, a man is needed because he is part of the equation. If one plus one equals two, one plus nothing does not equal two. If I get, you right. know, you need both of them in there. And they have different roles to play. And I would go so far as say, and this is something, and maybe we'll use this as a segue. We've just got a few moments left. When America was, I want to say, in, in, before about the 1910, 1920, if you'll do some studies, whenever there was a divorce, but only like 1% or 2% of, the, of, of marriages ended in divorce at that time, whenever there was a divorce, children always went to the father. Because children, are, they looked at fathers as being responsible for children. It's about 1920 that things began to shift, and it's really only been less than 100 years that if there was a divorce that the children started going to the mothers. We used to think fathers were actually the ones more responsible for children, and I happen to think they still are. That might just have made some of y'all mad. Stick around for the second part of the program. We'll talk about this some more on For Men Only. <laughs>